I don't know what it is about spring that makes me feel like I should be making all these brightly colored arachnids, but today we're actually going to take a break from the brightly colored scorpion that I made last month and the brightly colored <laughs> that I'm going to make next month to just make a nice dark but still shimmery and bright elaphrus beetle, specifically the elaphrus cuprius found in England, aka the copper peacock beetle. Not to be confused with the Elaphrus riparius, aka the green sox peacock, or the Elaphrus viridis, aka the delta green ground beetle, or the Elaphrus laponicus, also British, aka the northern peacock beetle, which is the one I low key wish I did, because, not gonna lie, it's definitely sexier than the bug that I'm going to make right now. But you win some, you'll lose some, you know? So now we're just doing what we always do, which is making the tin foil base, covering it with clay, and just smoothing it. It's making it nice and flat because this one has to be skinny. And therefore I had to rip out the insides, make it a little thinner, and then reapply it, which eh, went way better than I thought it would. This entire bug, beetles, I think, are just one of the easiest bugs to make. So whenever I need a break, I'll just make a beetle. What we're doing right now is just we're making one of the three segments because every beetle, don't quote me on it, but according to me, every beetle on the planet has three segments, the bottom part, the middle part, and the head. Also, don't quote me on that. So that's what we're just making right now. So I feel like I should clarify that technically, 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 we're not exactly making the Elaphrus cuprius because the Elaphrus cuprius, the head is bigger than the middle section. Technically, I'm probably getting closer to the Elaphrus uliginosus, which has the middle part be bigger than the head, which is just semantics and just proves that you can't really trust anything a woman says, but at least I'm trying to be honest. So let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> Once again, do not quote anything I say. So now we finished forming the body and the eyes. So ooh, we're onto the really fun and cute little mouthpiece, which will also have teeth, which I will address later in the video. But for now, the mouthpiece was way easier than it looked. You just press, then smooth, then poke and prod until voila. Let's talk about these cute little dimples. This is what I really, really liked about this bug. I just like that it had dimples, not on its face. That would be crazy. But on its shell, I just think that's really, really nice. And here's what I did from the mouth, actually. I'm proud of this method. I think this was really, really fun to make. I just like, yeah, you know, and then I stuck it on and now it looks like it has little teeth, it has little clompers. I think that's the only thing that makes this bug a little scary, but we just mm, don't have to dwell on that. So now I'm going to make the antenna which came out nicely. And now I'm going to add the dots, which came out nicely. And you would think that this would be the really, really tedious part. But every time I have a bug where I have to put these little dots, it just gets me so excited. I don't know, I just, I just zone out, you know? My eyes go all cross-eyed and I just have a blast doing it. Funny enough, we're not doing our usual method with the legs. What we're going to do instead is something brand new in every sense of the word. Because we're going to do this method with the glue, which doesn't work. But that it does. So we're going to use this method because the Elaphras, I needed to have the end parts be really thin, which you'll see why later. So that's why I am super gluing the thick wire to my thin wire. The only thing I wish I did different with this bug is making the thighs a little thicker and a little longer. Well, not thicker. I think it's fine in thickness actually, but a little longer just so that it shows more. But yeah, I just made the holes, stuck them in, and I painted it because I wasn't sure if, like, if I would get the paint really close. So I just painted it preemptively, and then I tightened it up by adding glue to certain places, and voila, we will come back to the legs. Well, rather, I should say, we will come back to my grand reveal with the legs in a second. But now to the paint job, which is just really simple. I just coated the bottom part with black to only to be covered with the glitter shimmer later. 
and I added metallic blue. Like a man on the down low, I was in denial about what I really wanted to do. So even though I knew in my heart that I wanted to be purple, and in the pictures it looked more purple, I had the blue on me, and it was the only blue I had. And the blue looked nice, but it just wasn't exactly what I was going for at this moment. At some point, I decided I needed to be true to myself and true to the intentions of my heart. And therefore, I just went out and bought some purple. Color shift purple, to be exact, because this book is very metallic. And I also gave it the blue shimmer on the black part. Um, it's supposed to be blue purple color shift, which you can kind of see at some points, but I think it's mainly just like a blue color shift. The dots, on the other hand, I kept purple. The bug's eyes aren't purple, but I wanted to add that little bit of razzle dazzle to help it stand out from the mud and the bogs and the swamps that it's used to back in England. Not even like that would really help since this bug is technically only like nine to 11 millimeters tall, but it is very meaningful to me. Finally, we've gotten to the grand reveal of what I was doing. So for the antenna and for the legs, I have decided to use beads. I don't know if this will be the method that I always use, but for this one, this type of beetle where I'm not molding the legs like I do for my arachnids, I think it's just a really cool way of doing it. I don't know, it just pops to me. And then after that, we are essentially done. So I wanna say here, thank you for watching. Thank you to my 11 new subscribers from last month. Thank you so much. That just flatters me so much. You guys have me blushing so hard right now. Can't believe I'm up to 28 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for everything. See you next month for my next bug and bye. Thank you.